A YouTuber named Erbex Hill uploaded a video last year documenting himself exploring the Robert Fulton School. He previously visited this school. In an earlier video from 2021 on his main channel, he added that there is a risk of being robbed or worse since people use the abandoned school as shelter. For context, the Robert Fulton Elementary School is located in Cleveland, Ohio. It is classified as a historical building in the U.S. National Register of Historic Places. It was built in 1935 and closed in 2013. The school was then sold to a company named Concordia Group. It is unclear if they resold the property, but some also speculate that there are redevelopment plans for the school. Currently, the school remains a breeding ground for criminals and the homeless to reside in. Eric Hill was well aware of this, but he still decided to visit it once more. In a video he uploaded in May on his main YouTube channel, he showed the interior of the school. I'm definitely not walking on this floor. While the building has been abandoned for over a decade now, it's still odd how much it has been decaying. He shows different parts of the school, namely the basement in a room which is flooded with water. Eventually, he gets into a classroom where he encounters multiple strange writings, making the impression that someone lives there. After this, the following happens. Towards the end of his video, he showed certain parts of the footage he captured in slow motion. We can see that a different entity is walking around the building, presumably the same man that screamed at him. According to the scream we heard earlier, we can assume that the man residing in the building was equally as terrified as Urbex Hill. It was probably a homeless person living there. While he didn't make any updates on the school, Urbex is still uploading exploration videos to this date. Check it out if you are interested. Before we continue, please consider subscribing to my Patreon and get exclusive access to videos and my Patreon exclusive series, which is even more disturbing than the series here on YouTube. Dan Moomin was a TikTok creator who would post videos about his life and family of eight children, including seven boys and one girl. Although Dan lived in a small, underprivileged area, he somehow managed to raise his children and maintain a peaceful life. 
Many on the Doujin platform appreciated his hard work and loved his videos, leading him to reach a follower count of 60,000 with just a few uploads. Donations kept pouring in, and many influencers began flying to his house to interview him and assist his family. Inspired by Dan's positive personality, a man who goes by the account name Jojo Brother Jiju decided to visit Dan. Jojo had already made multiple visits to Dan and his family before and decided to drop by once again. However, this time, he made a shocking discovery. One of Dan's sons revealed that he and his brothers fed their mother, who lived nearby. But Jojo had never heard of Dan's wife before, and not just Jojo. Nobody had ever heard or seen Dan's wife, and most assumed that she must have just passed away. This is where it took a sinister turn. Jojo asked the little boy to take him to his mother, and what he discovered was truly shocking. Shuzhu saw a helpless woman being chained up by her neck and locked with a padlock. The woman looked terrified, standing barefoot with no coat in the middle of the winter. It felt as if she had been there for a while, and she seemed confused and completely disconnected from reality. Even though it was hard to make out what she was saying, the woman pleaded to be free and told Shushu that she had been enslaved and kept as a prostitute here for years. The clip posted by Shushou went viral, raising many questions and causing an uproar in the country. Many speculated that the woman could be a victim of human trafficking, and there could potentially be more victims involved. As the matter grew, officials in Jiangsu province issued a statement. According to them, the woman, surnamed Yang, had married Dan in 1998 and wasn't a victim of human trafficking. She had been diagnosed with mental illness and was under treatment. Dan himself came forward and made a video acknowledging that she was his wife, claiming that Yang suffered from dangerous mental health issues and would harm others around her, including her children. Because of this, for his children's safety, Yang was kept chained up. Officials would make a statement saying, at present, and she has already been treated and her family has been given further assistance to ensure they have a warm Lunar New Year. But something didn't seem to line up. If she was suffering mentally, why was she chained up in such inhumane conditions? Many attempted to visit Yang in order to help her and free her from this neglect, only to discover that the entire village in which Dan's family lived had been closed off. The owner of Shushu's brother's account was arrested and his account had been deactivated. Keep in mind, this was the guy that exposed it. It was as if the government was trying to completely suppress this issue. However, due to massive international scrutiny and public pressure, the truth came out and it wasn't something anyone had hoped for. The woman who was chained up is not named Yang. Her real name is Zhao Hua Mei, and she was a victim of human trafficking. When Zhao was just 20 years old, she was sold to a human trafficking ring and was sold multiple times, finally being bought by Dan's father. Dan married the woman and used her as a baby breeding machine. Zhao was also not suffering from any mental illness. Instead, she was suffering from a seizure disorder. Every time Zhao had a seizure, Dan would beat and chain her up in the cold in an isolated hut behind his house, leaving her starving and in an inhumane condition like an animal. And Zhao has since been rescued, and Dan has been arrested on charges of human trafficking. However, this wasn't the end, since Zhao wasn't the only victim of human trafficking in that area. Before being arrested, the owner of Shushu's brother account found another woman being chained up just a few miles ahead in the same village. <laughs> Honestly, this is just unbelievable. 
This woman, whose name is Zong, had also been a victim of human trafficking and was treated even worse than Zhao. Apparently, she was beaten so severely that she developed serious mental disorders and was lying there being chained up on her knees for 20 years. We don't know for certain what happened to Zong as no information has since been made public about her and her case is still under investigation. By the way, just a quick reminder if you liked the video so far, make sure to subscribe to stay up to date. Not much is known about this case outside of the country it happened in. Gunnar Runar was born on the 15th of March 1987. Although a shy kid, Gunnar was described to be very close to his father. Tragically, his father would off himself in his presence, leaving a traumatic effect on the then nine-year-old Gunnar. Consequently, he would isolate himself from the rest of the world and remain silent for most of his life until he met a girl named Hildur. Gunnar would immediately fall completely in love with Hildur, developing a strange obsession for her. Much to his despair, Hildur was eventually married to a man named Hannes Paul Helgeson, CEO of a confectionery manufacturer. This prompted Gunnar to make a YouTube channel, posting a video of him confessing his love to Hildur. Hildur saw this video and asked Gunnar to remove it, but he never did. Despite all of this, they still remain friends. One year later, on August 14, 2010, Gunnar and Hildur both were at a nightclub party when Hildur would ask him for a lift due to being heavily intoxicated. However, Gunnar decided to take advantage of the situation and instead of driving her to her home, he took her to his own house and carried her up to his bed to let her sleep there while he slept on his couch. The next morning, Hildur woke up and wasn't really happy to find herself in Gunnar's bed. She immediately called her friend to drive her to her home where she discovered something really disturbing. Hilde would find her husband Hannah's naked body on top of the staircase outside her bedroom, entirely covered in blood. The police soon arrive and notice that Hannes had been beaten to death. Hannes had 20 stab wounds and injury marks on his body, implying that he had tried to defend himself before passing away. The case quickly became a sensation in Iceland, prompting every media outlet to cover it. There were multiple suspects in the case. However, it soon became clear that it was actually Gunnar who committed the crime. Police discovered a bloody shoe print near Hannes' bed, which matched perfectly with Gunnar's shoes that were confiscated at the same time of the investigation. Police also searched Gunnar's car and found traces of blood in the trunk. Gunnar was finally arrested and confessed to it. According to him, he had been planning this crime for months and made sure to leave no evidence. During one of the interrogations, he said, I love Hilder. She was supposed to be with me. She was not supposed to be with him. On October 13, 2011, Gunnar was found guilty and was sentenced to 16 years in prison. Lu Zhao Zhao Mao Zhi, also known as Little Kitty, was a Chinese influencer and TikToker with more than 700,000 followers. While her videos seemed really positive and she came across as a happy and joyful person, it was far from reality. Lu had been suffering mentally for quite a long time and was even hospitalized for it. Some of the users would even point out the strange marks on her wrists and worry for her safety. In 2019, she began dating another influencer named Zhao Rolin, but the relationship didn't turn out well. In 2021, they broke up, prompting Zhao to post a video on his account addressing the situation. He claimed that Lu was mentally unstable and would repeatedly threaten to take her own life in order to manipulate him. He also accused her of repeatedly cheating on him and creating fake scars on her wrist using makeup to gaslight him. Additionally, he revealed that Lua was pregnant and he doubted that the child was his. As a result, Zhao's followers began harassing and cyberbullying Lua. She continuously received death threats and insulting comments on her social media accounts. Despite this, Luo attempted to share her side of the story, denying the allegations of cheating and instead accusing Zhao of being unfaithful to her multiple times. 
According to her, Zhao attempted to seduce his own fans in order to hook up with him. Some of the screenshots of his attempts to attract other women were made public by those women themselves. Lu even uploaded close-up images of her scars to prove their authenticity and shared medical records proving that she was taking treatment for a mental state. Lu even agreed to take a paternity test but claimed it was Zhao who refused, prompting her to abort. However, it was too late. And Zhao's fans would continuously enter her live streams, leaving vulgar and hateful comments. Even though it was already a lot for her to handle, Lu would move on, eventually entering into another relationship with a guy named Li. However, this wasn't the best decision, as Li would turn out to be even more manipulative, using Lu only for her money and resources. One of Lu's friends stated that in October of 2021, while spending some time together, Li mixed something into Lu's drink, waited for her to fall asleep, and then invited a group of friends over to award her. Shortly after, Li cut all contact with Lu, finally pushing her over the edge. On October 14, 2021, Lu would suddenly begin a live stream, claiming that it would most likely be her last stream. In the live stream, she would appear completely exhausted and almost about to pass out. She would state that she has been going through a lot in her life and it was just too much for her to handle any longer. And she said, I appear to be happy, but this is all for show. I hope everyone will be happy when they see my videos and will see that I'm happy too, but I can't hold on anymore. It is at this point that people began noticing something really alarming. Lu presented a bottle filled with pesticide, stating her intention to chuck it down. While some people understood the gravity of the situation and urged her to rethink her decisions, others began bullying her. Some people in the comments even argued that she was only seeking attention and creating drama. As more and more people began egging her to drink the pesticide, she succumbed under the pressure and drank it, showing the camera an empty bottle. Moments after, she began chugging down glasses of water before clutching on her throat and abruptly ending the live stream. Lua then herself called for the ambulance and was rushed to the hospital. Lu Zhao Mao would sadly pass away on the 15th of October 2021. As for Lu, it was far from the end of her misery. After her passing, she was transported to a funeral home in Jinping City and was cremated. Lu's loved ones gathered outside the funeral home to receive their daughter's ashes, only to find out that they were given powder instead. This was due to the three staff members, Jiao, Zhang, and Li, having stolen her ashes with the intention of selling them for ghost marriages. In China, it is often considered bad luck if a man or woman passes away without having a partner. Consequently, ghost marriages are arranged where the corpses of deceased individuals are traded in order to marry them. There is a thriving black market for female corpses in a place called Shadong. The staff members who stole Luo's ashes were willing to sell them for ghost marriages, but luckily, the customer they tried to sell them to reported them to the authorities. The little kitty's ashes were finally recovered and were returned to her family. Ricardo Lopez, also known as the Bjork Stalker, was an American pest exterminator who would attempt to murder the Icelandic singer Bjork in order to marry her. Lopez was born in Uruguay and eventually moved to Hollywood, Florida, where he would begin documenting his life and obsession with the singer Bjork. Hello, my name is Ricardo Lopez. It is January 14th, 1996. And I will begin a documentation of my life, my art, and of my plans. Do you want to see something funny? I'm going to show you who I am. Lopez always had low self-esteem and was socially awkward. In a diary found by police, Lopez expressed feeling insecure and inadequate around women. He didn't have a successful career and began working for his brother's pest control business to support himself. He lived alone in his Florida home and eventually developed an extreme obsession with Bjork. In the video diaries, we can slowly see him becoming out of touch with reality. <laughs> In 1993, Lois began gathering information about Bjork, sending her numerous fan letters and gifts. As time passed, his obsession became increasingly alarming. In his diary, Lopez expressed his wish to be accepted by Bjork 
and become a person who had the most effect on her life. His obsession finally reached its lowest point when he planned to take her life as a means of revenge. In 1996, Lopez learned that Bjork was in a romantic relationship with the English musician Goldie. Feeling betrayed, Lopez decided to punish Bjork. He wrote in his diary, I wasted 8 months and she has a effing lover. At this point, Lopez began actively planning to kill Bjork and take his own life in order to marry her in the afterlife. Lopez constructed a letter bomb using sulfuric acid which he planned to mail to Bjork's address in London, England. In his video diaries, we can see him constructing it, showing the effects of sulfuric acid and testing it with black ink. You see all that damage? That's sulfuric acid. 96%. I burned myself a little bit in the tongue because I went that, I blew. And this is sulfuric acid that was diluted big time with water. Instantly it touched me and I went and washed it off real good. It takes time for this to burn at least a minute to, to do some serious damage. On the morning of September 12, 1996, Lopez began filming his final video diary named Last Day Ricardo Lopez. The video begins with him preparing to go to the post office in order to mail the letter to Bjork. After returning from the office, his room was filled with posters of Bjork and a hand-painted sign with handwritten words reading The Best of Me, September 12th. As Bjork's music played in the background, Lopez would shave his head and eyebrows, paint his face with red and green color and introduce a strange object into the frame. The object was a gun. As Bjork's song I Remember You finishes playing, Lopez shouts victory and shoots himself in the mouth with a 38 caliber revolver. The footage released by the police censored it, but you could hear the audio. Four days later, Lopez's corpse was discovered by the Hollywood Police Department, along with his 10 two-hour footage tapes. On the wall, there was a message left by him reading, The 8mm videos are documentation of a crime. They are for the FBI. After looking at Lopez's final tape, the Hollywood Police Department contacted Scotland Yard about the dangerous package on the way to Bjork. The package didn't reach the address yet and was intercepted, saving Bjork from the potential harm. If you look around me, I'm a piece of shit. Okay. I'm dirty, sloppy, fat, disgusting. Okay, I'm a piece of shit. Okay. The reason why I don't, you know, I'm not interested in finding a girlfriend this and that because I'm a piece of shit. Stanislav Reshetniak, known as Stas Reefly on the internet, is a Russian streamer and YouTuber who mostly streams himself playing video games or in online casinos. On the 2nd of December 2020, Stas was streaming with his girlfriend Valentina and his friend Marina when two and a half hours into the stream, a viewer paid Stas $1,000 to beat his girlfriend and lock her outside in freezing cold temperature. They both got into an argument and in self-defense, Valentina drew out a knife, threatening Stas with it. Stas pushed her onto the chair and stripped her down to her underwear before locking her outside in minus 8 degrees Celsius temperature, which would be 17 degrees Fahrenheit. Additionally, he poured cold water on her and didn't even allow her to grab a jacket. Stas would continue streaming for some time. In the stream, Valentina was heard banging on the door asking to get in, but Stas completely ignored her requests, even making fun of her. Eventually, Stas went outside to let her in, only to find her collapsed on the ground with no pulse. Stas dragged her lifeless body into the apartment, sat at his desk for a while to read comments, and then called the paramedics. However, it was too late. Valentina Grigorieva had already passed away. Stas was sentenced to six years in prison on charges of involuntary manslaughter. Hey there guys, Fave here, and I did this video about a month ago where I asked the community a question about, oh, you got banned on Roblox? Tell me about it. Kenneth Brandon, also known as Fave, was an American Roblox YouTuber with more than 600,000 followers. He began his YouTube journey on August 28, 2010, and would regularly upload videos related to Roblox news and machinima. 
Roblox, being one of the most popular games among younger audiences, led him to quickly become one of the biggest Roblox YouTubers on the platform. He'd even make a Discord server where he'd regularly interact with his fans, building a community and gaining engagement. However, it soon became clear that his intentions were more sinister. In January of 2021, a 96-page document was released called The Faith Document, showcasing Faith's inappropriate conversations with multiple minors. The document alleged that Faith would use his internet attention to lure in minors and exploit them, explicitly harassing and even blackmailing them to gratify his personal desires. According to one of the victims named Ali, Faith met her through a Discord server's voice chat and after a while, slided into her DMs. Even after showing no signs of interest, Faith began flirting with her, even admitting that he was a literal predator. He'd repeatedly tried to make the chats intimate, all the while knowing that she is underage. At the time, Faith was 19 and Ali 17. She'd go on to make a video on a YouTube channel exposing Faith and making conversations between them public. I cannot show all of the screenshots here because of the sensitive nature. Ali would even share a voice call where Faith is denying everything and trying to gaslight her. In the call, it seems as if this type of behavior is pretty common for him, which means there could be a lot more victims. It is at this point that one of the victims decides to test Faith and goes along with his inappropriate messages. What follows is a series of more disgusting screenshots, where Faith would again and again try to take advantage of her all the while knowing that she is only 16 years old. There is also an alleged voice call between her and Faith, supposedly of Faith speaking intimately with her. Another of Faith's victims, who was only 13 years old, admitted to sharing intimate pictures of herself with him and being terrified of it. But Faith would continuously encourage her, saying words like, don't worry, I'll keep it safe in my special folder. This could mean he might have had some other pictures saved there as well. After the release of the document, Faith would go onto his Twitter to defend himself, claiming the allegations were fake and the Snapchat account wasn't his. However, this was quickly dismissed. In September of 2021, Faith stopped uploading and abandoned all of his social media accounts. The comments under his latest upload are also disabled. If you've missed the previous episode, click here to see it or check out the full playlist.